Continuing from the previous part, we now have to actually fix the model up by and make it actually usable for Blender to be used. Uh, we're going to start first by just hiding the armatures here because we need to fit. We're going to worry about the mesh first. Uh, we're going to click on one of the two, and for now I'll just hide the head since we're going to work on that in just a moment. We need to get rid of a bunch of these parts of the mesh that we can't actually really use inside of Blender. So we're going to go into edit mode, which is up here into the edit mode. But for this video, I will be using this little wheel widget that I've got. Uh, I don't know where it came from. I've had it since Blender 2.6. So unfortunately, but I'm going to be using this wheel to swap between the modes. So we're going to go into edit mode, deselect everything, and we need to delete the outline, hit select, and it selects this little cube here, and then shadow, which collects or selects this low poly mesh that sits around it. We want to delete both of these. Delete faces. After that, we want to make sure that the mesh has some, everything is the same name. So as you, if I select base here, you can notice it doesn't select the entire jacket because the jacket on, and also with many characters, has this secondary one called the frip or flip as well. Uh, so for what we're doing in Blender, we actually can just leave it apart. But I like to, since I'm, they're all going to be using the same material and shader and whatnot, I like to organize it a little bit better. So if we go to select, and then click on base and hit assign, deselect, and then select base again, you notice now it selects the entire bat base mesh. Then we're going to go clean up a little bit, so we'll go in object mode, select the, the outline material, and we're going to hit this little minus button, so we just get rid of it. Make sure you don't accidentally click decal. We want to keep decal. And then since I've merged Frip into base, I'm also going to delete that one. And again, you don't have to, but it just makes it so later on when you're working on it, it's a little bit easier because you know, since you have fewer materials. And that's the base fixed, and now we're going or the body fixed, and now we're going to fix up the head a little bit. We're going to be doing basically the exact same thing, but we're going to make it a little bit easier for us. So as you see here, it says min base 001, or if you had imported the uh, the uh, head first and then the base, the base or the body would have the 001. We're going to actually select this and we're going to change this to be the other one with this little drop down. This makes it so that they're using the exact same material between the head and the body. And then we want to select the outline. As you can see, it selects a little cube here. And shadow, which selects this low poly mesh. And we're going to delete both of those. Decal, we're going to do the same thing as we did with the base, and we're going to do the drop down and select the decal that's being used by the body. And then there is this main glow, which you can't exactly see it right now because of his hat, but most of the time it is parts of the body that are illuminated. Uh, Potemkin has little glowing bits on his little circular pistons. Soul Bad Guy has the glowing on his weapon. Different characters have these glow bits. Uh, I recommend keeping this as its own separate material. Because you need to make it so it's actually emissive, which we can handle in a later video. After that, we can just go back into object mode, and we're going to delete the outline and the shadow. So we have all the same materials that are between all of them. Now we need to actually join the armatures together. Which you can see is a little bit of a tricky thing, since they have different armatures. To make it a little bit easier, I'm actually going to go into these object properties. I'm going to go to... Viewport display in front and change the display as bounds. Then I'm going to go to the object data properties, viewport display, and change it from octahedral to stick. Uh, what that did is it changed it from when you're in pose mode and edit mode from big stick or big things to sticks. It just helps it so I can work a little bit easier. Do the same thing here, change it to stick and oops, bounds in front. This just helps it so it works a little bit easier for me. Going to select one of the armatures and then the other armature. It doesn't really matter which order. And we're going to use click, uh, control click both of them and then do control J and it joins them together. Uh, after that, you want to go into each mesh, just click on them and go to the modifiers tab. And oh, perfect, perfect. You can see here that it's turned red here and there's nothing in the object because the head or the body has been moved to the armature of the head. So we're going to actually. Drop that down and select the name of the armature that's currently connected to. And now the actual weight painting for it will work. Now we need to join the meshes together as well. So we're just going to shift click both of them together and do control J. So we've got just the one mesh with the, or the materials that we need. 
And now we need to actually fix the armature of it as well. So we're gonna go into edit mode. You can see we've got a uh, big sticks and we've got these two different roots here. That's because in the normal game, the head is completely separate from the body, as you can see here. And it uses constraints during actual runtime to connect the two. But we're gonna cheat. We're just gonna connect the bone directly to it inside of inside of Blender so that we can actually use it. So if we go down the entire skeleton structure, all the way to neck, and we find head attach. And we also have this body AGO, but we'll get to that in just a moment. If we find the head root, we want head def for the defamation, and then we're going to control click head attach. And then do control P, which opens this window to parent it, and we want to make sure we hit keep offsets. What we did there is we actually just connected the head to the neck, or to the, to the entire head body. So we can actually use the head. But we still have this head and neck bone. We need to, the reason why the naming convention is, is because it is the or origin, so uh, the this is a bone that was a part of the head armature, and the suffix, or the suffix is what it needs to actually be connected to. So G head neck, G neck. So do control, control P, and we want to connect it with a keep offset. And then there's this bone. This is why you need to make sure you read all the bones so you know what you're working with. Sometimes there are things like this body AGO, and they're not always, but there sometimes is. This is a part of the neck that needs to connect to the lower part of the jaw. Yeah, I don't know why Blender does that, but inside of the head, there is lower head, G A G O. So we want to make sure you have body AGO, and then control click G A G O, and then connect keep offset. And we how everything's all connected up. Uh, if you want to get rid of these big stick bits, you can shrink them down to you know 0 0.1. Oop. Make sure you set it to individual origins, not like I just did where it's medium. 0 0.1, and now it's shrunk down to actually fit inside of the body. Uh, if you are going to be just working inside a blender, there are these, as you may have noticed, there's these floating bits of what is actually the hair. Um, you can just get rid of these. I personally do because I'm almost never going to actually use them. These are used for in, during animations. They will sometimes have hair extensions or little blurs and whatnot. Uh, that's what these are for. Uh, you can delete them just going into edit mode and then select them with B for box, select, and then control L, which connect, which selects all links. And you just go through and you just grab them all, control L, delete. Uh, there's still some stuff here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do control Z. You can press this button, which turns on wireframe mode, lets you see and select things behind them. If I select all that, control L. There's still a little bit down here. Unfortunately, yeah, it's a little bit of a process, especially with stuff like this. Uh, I, I'll, let you guys, I'll let you guys actually worry about cleaning all that up. That's a bit of an effort for me to deal with just on this tutorial. But after that, we are ready to apply materials and whatnot in the next video.